Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I am taking a look at a new product by the fine folks over at Celestion Speakers. To be more specific, the Celestion Plus division of Celestion, which if anybody is aware, Celestion has started Celestion Plus probably, I don't know, maybe three, four years ago now. I'm not exactly sure when, but it's been out for a while. And they have been embarking on creating impulse responses of many of their speakers that they have available so that folks can load those into uh, their modelers, such as the Line 6 Helix or the Axe Effects and so on and so forth. Any, anywhere where we can use impulse responses. Now, in my experience with the Celestion Plus impulse responses, they do an amazing job, but I believe they may have just changed the game a little bit here by bringing out what they call dynamic speaker responses, or for short, DSRs. Now you might ask what these are. Well, before I can get into that, today's video is really about a new product they have called Celestion Speaker Mix Pro. Now this is a plugin that's gonna work inside your DAW. So this is gonna be more of a studio plugin. Unfortunately, we can't take these IRs and load them into something like our, our Line 6 Helix, but you might ask, well, what's the point of this? Well, what the Speaker Mix Pro is, is basically a mixer that allows us to load up to six IR files. Now it is compatible with our everyday run of the mill impulse response. Responses. So your entire existing library of impulse responses will work just fine with it and actually even be given a slight upgrade as we will see in a couple moments. But where Speaker Mix Pro really shines is when used with the new DSR impulse responses from Celestion. So again, you might ask what these are. Well, you know, anybody who knows anything about speakers knows that a speaker is not just a linear device. What do I mean by that? Well, I've done videos in the past about gain staging and talking about linear and non-linear audio devices. A linear audio device is going to basically output the same tone or sound regardless of how much input signal is put into it. It's not going to alter the tone based off of how much input signal it receives. A non-linear device will. So certain things like microphone preamps or you know, tube compressors, um, anything pretty much with tubes in it, the harder we drive the front end of it, the more it's going to naturally distort and change the characteristics of how it processes it. And then we get a very different signal coming out. Well, speakers are no different. The problem with sort of the standard static impulse response is most of us have been using up until now is they are linear. It doesn't matter how much signal we put into them, they're still going to just process the signal in one static way and we're going to get the same thing coming out just louder or softer. But with Celestion's new DSRs, we are going to have impulse responses now that react to how much signal they're hit with, just like a real guitar speaker would, right? So we're going to get more natural breakup and harmonic distortion coming out of those speakers if we are playing harder, if we're playing more signal into them. What this amounts to is a much more realistic feel than what we could ever get with static impulse responses. So this is a real game changer. I've done some messing around with this. I'm going to have a few examples later. I'm gonna play a lot of examples throughout the video, but I'm also going to have a few examples uh, level matched comparing Celestion's own sort of static impulse responses with the new DSR version of the same impulse response at the same setting so you can hear it for yourself. Level matched, done in, a, in the most scientific manner I could. And I think you're going to notice the difference. The one thing I would recommend though is listening to this video, the audio examples on a really good set of speakers or even better yet, a really good set of headphones to really listen to the difference between these. But let's go over to, uh, I'm gonna go into Cubase, but all you're going to see right now is the Speaker Mix Pro plugin. And let's go through first of all, the layout of it and the different features that we have. So here we are over at Speaker Mix Pro plugin and a very nice looking interface, uh, beautiful looking mixer. Uh, over here we have our input channel. We have our separate IR channels. We have another channel here, which is a room reverb channel. They call it the room channel. Uh, very interesting. We'll talk about this in just a moment. Uh, then we have our output section here with our master outputs. Um, and a little section over here with some interesting features uh, that we will take a look at and some VU meters. Up here, we have sort of a visual of and some controls on altering the sound of each speaker model, but it shows you which speaker model you're using and whatnot. So 
Very interesting stuff. Uh, let's take a look, first of all, up here um, at our sort of preset layout. So if we click on the speaker model, what it does is it gives us a layout of all the speakers available. Now, the ones that are grayed out are the ones that we don't own. When you purchase Speaker Mix Pro, you are actually given 10 DSR to go along with your Speaker Mix Pro. So I've chosen these ones here. Uh, a couple of them I chose, especially this uh, G12M Greenback, I chose because I already owned Celestian's uh, existing IR of that, and I wanted to do a comparison to them. But we have all these different uh, examples here. I have the G10 Gold, the Blue, G12M, 65 Cream back, and so on and so forth. Now when we click on one of these, we're also then taken down to the other section that we own. Do we have the 112 open, 112 closed? Again, I don't have those. I do have the 212 open back cabinet and the 412 closed. When I click on one of those, I'm then given the choice to mic it with either a Shure SM57, a Royer R121, Sennheiser MD421. Really interesting stuff, and I'll give you some sound examples of these in a moment. So I've chosen this Celestian Greenback, one of my favorite speakers. We also have a little bar here where, if you see, this is kind of a close-up of our speaker cone and to the edge, and it shows how we can just slide this around to get sort of more towards miking the cone of the speaker which would be a thinner tone. And we can kind of blend that over to a balanced tone all the way out to a very dark tone. Okay, so really interesting stuff here. Very intuitively laid out. And I think the, the folks at uh, Celestian have done a really great job with this. So great stuff. These pictures here are not going to move. This is more just a visual representation of the mics that were used. I don't think it really has any bearing on, you know, when we move this around, we're not going to see microphones move or anything like that. Uh, one thing that I noticed, though, is to get any sound out of it at first, I had to come in here, click on, you know, double click on my greenback, double click on my 412 cab and you know I picked a Royer R121 and then that gives us some sound okay with those and, and what we can see here On the open back cabinets, they even give the ability to do a Shure SM57 miking the back of the cabinet. Very interesting stuff. I'm going to go back to the 412 closed with the Royer R121. Now, a lot of you might be wondering where I'm getting my tone from. Well, what I have here is just an instance of Helix Native feeding directly into Speaker Mix Pro. All I have is a Placator Dirty Amp model on it. There's nothing else. There's no effects. Uh, and I wanted to keep it as dry as possible so that we can then show the room section later to hear what that adds to it as far as reverb. All right, so that's really interesting. If I take this balanced and move it. just gives us slightly different sounds based off where that microphone is going to be moved around. So we'll leave that at balanced right now. All right, now what I can do is I can load up six other IRs, right? I could come over to my third uh, channel over here. Now when I click through these, you'll notice it changes the speaker model and shows which one I have on that particular channel. So I have nothing on channel three, it says not found right now. So I'm gonna double click up here. Let's say I wanted to add the Celestian blue speaker with a 212 open back with a Royer 121. And there, we can choose our different mics. Let's go with the 421 on that. And now what I have is that speaker. And I could compare that, mute that, and go back to my green back. Nice thing here is I can start doing things like this. I could pan one left, one right.
or I could bring them back to the center and just combine them in that way. Blend more or less of one. So really simply, you can see we could blend all sorts of different things in here and have them work really nicely, pan them, uh, affect them in many ways. We have EQs on each channel as well. So I could come here, I'm back on my first channel here, uh, as you'll see. Um, I can go to my EQ, I can turn that on and I could you know, tweak this with some EQ right within the box. I could double click one of these. or just turn it off and I'll leave those off for now, but another great feature we have on our channels. But let's come back to our input module. First thing we have in this input module is what they call Z-curve. Now Z-curve, I'm gonna read right from Celestian themselves manual so that I don't misquote what this does. They say in the manual that the Z-curve dial controls the dynamic complex electrical coupling between the component level amp output model and the input of the mixer channels where a larger value is equal to a higher gain amplifier's output impedance. Z-curve is IR and DSR compatible. All right, so um, we can actually improve or alter our existing IRs, even if they aren't a DSR, one of the new Celestian DSRs, uh, by moving this. As was explained in the speaker mix manual, is this is kind of mimicking the different scenarios we might see uh, with the uh, impedance between the amp head and the speaker cabinet, okay? So what they were saying is lower settings are gonna be more like what, from what I understand, from what a clean amp is going to uh, send out uh, to our speaker. And as we turn it up more, it's gonna be more like a distorted tone is going to sound like. So let's listen to this, and I'm gonna bring this down all the way. So we get a little bit more beef out of it when we turn this up. I'm gonna keep that on max for now. Now the delay switch is really interesting. What this does if I engage this. Right now what you're hearing is a mono signal. Even though I'm running this potentially in stereo because I wanna show you the stereo room channel after. But if I click this, what it's going to do is it's gonna split my left and right signal and it's going to delay one of them by however many milliseconds we have set on the knob below. So listen to this in mono. As soon as I turn that on, and then we can adjust how much delay we're going to have. So again, a really easy way to beef up our sound without having to go and maybe, you know, duplicate tracks in our DAW and offset them and whatnot. We can do it all within Speaker Mix Pro. Really nice stuff. So I'm going to turn that off for now. One of the most important controls is going to be this input control, okay? Now we have an output control over here, which is going to be just our master control with its own EQ. And we have our VU meter showing what's, com what's coming out. Okay, so... The thing is, as I mentioned in the intro of this video, the DSRs that we are getting now from Celestian are going to sound different depending on how hard we hit the front end of them. So if I turn this down, it's going to hit the speaker with a much lower level, which is going to actually make it sound different because these are non-linear and they're dynamic. So if I turn that down, though, the problem is, we hear quite a difference because obviously the volumes drop. So we can't really tell the difference because the volume is different. So what we would have to do is crank our output up. And it really depends on how much we drop this. But let's start here at zero. 
See how we're going with that. Now, one thing that's really neat about this, if we set auto gain, what'll happen as I turn up the input, it will compensate by turning the output down by the same amount so we keep the same level so we can easier compare what it's doing to the tone. So let's see what happens here. We'll play this. And turn the input up. We see the output come down. And already, I don't know if that's coming across in the audio, but it feels different to me. There's a, there's a, a spongier bottom end to it. than before when we weren't hitting it as much in the front end. This is a real game changer to me because we can now sort of decide how much we want to hit that speaker and listen and, and see if it gives us the results we want. Maybe we don't want that, uh, you know, sponginess in that bottom end. So we bring this back down, raise this back up. So again, I'm not sure if that's coming through on the audio on YouTube, but it sure feels different. And this is really amazing stuff. I think the Celestian folks have, are really onto something, have really knocked it out of the park with this. I'm gonna keep this cranked up for now because I kinda like it there. So let's leave that alone. I'll just turn this auto gain off so things stay. In this output section here, again, we have the ability to collapse things to mono. We have a width control when we're using something in stereo. It's gonna give it a wider feel to it. Uh, we can sum it to mono from here. Um, now, if we go back over to each of our existing channels, I've already talked a little bit about it. We can pan them, right, which is a great feature. So if we are, are combining different uh, IRs or DSRs, we can pan those out left and right and have them sent them. But the room section is something that's very cool. So let's go over here and unmute the room section. So what we can do is we can choose different microphones that are miking up this live room that are gonna be kind of excited by the sounds that are put into it like would happen with real room mics. So we can choose to U67, Apollo, 4033, TLM107, and even load our own reverb IRs into it. So really useful. Let's start with the U67 here. I'm gonna turn this up so it's uh, around zero on our fader, and I'm gonna come back to my first channel here, and I'm gonna start adding in. Right now, there's, we're not feeding that with any signal from this, so we're not gonna get any reverb. But now I'm gonna bring that in. Now we also have a pre-delay on that, but let's switch through a few of these. So some nice reverb, obviously very exaggerated right now. I have a lot on there, but we can also, let's go back to the U67. We can add pre-delay to this. So the re reverb doesn't come in right away and engulf our direct tone. We can also widen this sound of it. If we take something that dramatic and just bring less of it in our channel. So a really nice reverb that we can add in 
also. So excellent stuff there and really well implemented by the folks over at Celestian. So what's really interesting now is I wanted to compare these new DSRs to the normal IRs. So what I did is I actually loaded up on this channel my own impulse response, okay? Now, if you notice, I'm gonna locate the appropriate IR. So here it is, G12M Greenback 412 Closed R121 Balanced Celestian Wave. I'm gonna double click that, and that's going to then be loaded up onto this channel. So if I mute the channel we've been listening to and go over here, I should now hear <laughs> Celestian's original IR instead of the DSR version. So on channel one is the DSR version, and on channel two is just the IR version. Now, the folks over at Celestian have mentioned that the Z curve will affect even IRs as well. So, We hear a lot of beef come into the bottom end of it. Now, if I switch back and forth between that and the DSR, There's a real feel difference and that bottom end gets, like, like I mentioned before, this kind of almost nice sponginess to it and we can alter that by how, how hard we are hitting even. As I dig in, the bottom end kind of changes in a very pleasant way, which I don't find happens with the regular static IR. There's a real feel difference. And again, I'm not sure if it comes through on YouTube on the audio, but in playing it, there really is kind of this nice, I don't know how to explain it other than say like a sponginess to the bottom end uh, from hitting that a little bit harder. So really interesting stuff. Now I want to play a little snippet of something I did before I'm shooting this video to compare the two. So what I've done is I set up the two channels. I played a riff one time and I reamped the exact same performance through the DSR and the IR of this particular model with all the other settings the same, okay? The same Z-curve setting and, and all other things equal with no room reverb or anything on it, just so you could hear the exact same performance performed through the DSR and IR of the same mic, speaker cab, speaker, same setting on the balanced, and let you hear, and hopefully by, by putting these through, and their volume matched to within 0.5 dB, so hopefully there you can maybe hear a little better the difference between the DSR versus the IR. So go give that a listen, and then I'll come back.
Okay, so what did you guys think? I really, like I said before, I don't know if this is something that's going to come across in a huge way on YouTube. It might almost be an impossible thing to, to really get across to the player. But what the Celestian folks have done here with the DSRs is very impressive. Um, we now have basically impulse responses that are going to be non-linear and much more dynamic and react more to our playing and to how hard we're hitting the front end of them. So the Speaker Mix Pro, I think, is a really valuable addition to any studio uh, that's that's doing you know recording guitars on a regular basis. I've often with my Line 6 Helix always been about using the stock cabs. Seldom do I go down the IR rabbit hole, not because I don't like them, just because I find the workflows easier. But in the studio, it's a different game altogether. We want to use whatever tools we have at our disposal to be able to craft whatever tone we want and what a beautiful addition to any studio to be able to add this in, you know, take your stock cab out of your Helix or whatever model you have and replace it with the Celestians. And the beautiful thing is, like I mentioned, we get 10 of these DSR models included with our purchase of Speaker Mix Pro, which happens to be on right now for $199 through the Celestian Plus website. I think this is a fabulous deal and a really welcome addition to any studio who's looking to really up the possibilities in the studio of using their modelers to even capture more realistic tones in the sense of this non-linear response of the speaker cabinet. So I would like to thank the folks at Celestian for sending this over for me to take a look at. I'm really blown away by it. I think it's, uh, you know, if, if you do a lot of studio work, uh, with modelers, I think this is really up the game and is something a lot of folks could get a lot of use out of. And the folks at Celestian offer so many amazing models um, that we can choose from. And they've done a really nice job implementing this. So I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this when I'm doing recording projects of my own. And uh, I think you guys might want to take a look at it. I'll put the links to everything below so you can take a look at it yourself and see if it's something that will work for you. Thank you guys. I know that was probably a little bit long and I hope uh, it was helpful and I hope it was enjoyable. And I'd like to thank you guys for sticking with me through it. Uh, please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of it. And uh, please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys so much again. I'll be back very soon with some more content. Ciao for now.